Once upon a time, the scientists discovered that our galaxy had these unusual features known as Fermi bubbles. Over the years, more and more evidence suggested that something really powerful caused these bubbles, and something extremely powerful occurred in our galaxy a few million years ago. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about this new discovery that suggests that whatever caused this also created an extremely bright and very powerful event that may have transformed our galaxy and may have been visible from very very far distances and also changed the night skies on our planet for at least a million years. So let's talk about this new discovery and welcome to What The Math. So the event that these Fermi bubbles created is what's known as a Cipher Flare. Cipher Flare is essentially what Cipher galaxies experience, where a typical galaxy suddenly experiences a bright flash and acquires what's known as an active galactic nuclei, where the center of the galaxy, the supermassive black hole in the middle, suddenly starts to produce a lot of energy. Increasing in brightness in all sorts of frequencies, including the visual light, x-ray light, even gamma rays, and this often lasts for at least a million years or so. Now, in the case of the Milky Way galaxy, currently our galaxy is extremely quiet. Unusually quiet, as a matter of fact. So if you were to look into the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which is somewhere right in this vicinity, and if you were to try to discover what's happening with the supermassive black hole in the middle, you would find that except for the motions of the stars here, there's really almost no sign that the black hole is even there. It's really, really quiet. But this was obviously not always so. Sometime in the past, probably a few million years ago, possibly something like three and a half to five million years ago, our galaxy may have actually looked something like this. And there are signs of this pretty much everywhere around the center of the galaxy. These so-called Fermi bubbles as we know them, that were discovered by the Fermi telescope, are currently the best indication of this activity in the past, but there are obviously other indications, and some of the recent discoveries suggest that this event was super powerful, like way more powerful than we even imagined. In one of the previous videos I've mentioned one of the studies from the Chinese university that discovered um, that the Fermi bubbles do correlate with other activity like the unusual X-ray emissions from the center, but now the scientists discovered that it also affected the so-called Magellanic Stream. Now, Magellanic Stream is a pretty interesting phenomenon. It's basically this really unusual stretch um, of gas, in a sense, that forms a bridge between two nearby galaxies. The nearby Large Magellanic Cloud and its neighbor Small Magellanic Cloud that you can see right there in the background. Both galaxies obviously have quite a lot of mass, and there's quite an interesting sort of interaction between them when each of the galaxies, including the Milky Way actually, sort of pull at each other. This pulling results in some of the gas and some of the material, including actual stars, leaving the galaxies and forming this bridge that we refer to as the Magellanic Stream. You can also check out one of the previous videos I made about these so-called galactic links that do talk about the Magellanic Stream and also another phenomenon that connects the Milky Way galaxy with LMC and SMC galaxies. So there's actually quite a lot of interaction between these three galaxies and all form these unusual shapes that we've only really discovered in the last decade or so. And this Magellanic Stream is actually pretty far away from the Milky Way galaxy. It's about 200,000 light years away from us, which is essentially somewhere right here. And that's about nine times as far as Earth is from the center of the galaxy. So at these distances, it's sort of unusual for us to see any effects coming from our own galaxy, but it looks like the recent observations using distant quasars established that there's this really unusual phenomenon that was caused by the Milky Way galaxy when it was very active and turned into a Cipher galaxy through this Cipher flare that's formed when a lot of mass suddenly falls into the central black hole. So the scientists behind this paper investigating the Magellanic Stream and the Fermi bubbles discovered that the gas molecules inside the Magellanic Stream were irradiated by a tremendously powerful event. Now, how did they discover this? Well, by using quasars. The super powerful and super bright distant objects that send the light across the entire universe and whose light we know pretty well. Today we use quasar light for a lot of different investigations, but sometimes we also use it for investigating gas in our own galaxy. 
So for example, here you can kind of see how a distant quasar that sends its light toward us will sometimes have its light pass through the actual Magellanic clouds and the Magellanic stream itself. And by using this light, we can then look at the spectrum of the quasar and determine what sort of molecules and what sort of atoms are within it. Using this technique and something like 31 different quasars, the scientists in this paper discovered that when the light passed through the Magellanic stream, the molecules inside the stream, the atoms, were actually ionized. And ionized by something extremely powerful. And the best explanation here was, well, essentially what you see in this illustration. It was most likely ionized by an extremely powerful emission coming from the center of our galaxy that traveled for 200,000 light years and then changed these molecules, turning them what they are today. Which is, of course, another confirmation to what we've already kind of suspected. Something extremely powerful happened in the center of the galaxy a few million years ago, and that extremely powerful event was powerful enough to ionize the entire area around our galaxy. And that means that these molecules were very likely turning an entire region of the night skies into an extremely huge nebula. Or something similar to what you see right here in the Orion Nebula simulation. Now, all of this is of course a speculation, but it's a speculation based on the observation of the molecules in the Magellanic stream. There's really no other reason for them to be ionized, and if they were ionized, they were very likely, millions of years ago, producing this. Because a lot of gas that we see today in the nebula is basically ionized gas as well. Which of course implies that we saw this in a huge region of night skies across the uh, relatively large area stretching from between large and small Magellanic clouds. Although when I say we, I mean these guys, the ancestors of humans. Assuming, of course, they even cared about the night skies, which they probably didn't. But if they did look into the night skies and try to see um, if there was something unusual there, they would see an extremely beautiful, very bright cloud across the night skies. And because it was there for at least a million years, they most likely thought that this was something very common, very typical, and something that was always there. Assuming, of course, that this cloud stretched across the same region as the Magellanic stream, it would have been pretty big in size and would have formed a very beautiful formation that would have been visible from anywhere on the planet. And the best illustration we have of what it may have been like is really right here. So this is what we think may have happened a few million years ago, and it's something that's really important for us to understand because if it happened once, it may happen again. But what exactly caused this? Well, today we believe that it was probably a very large molecular cloud. Actually, the same type of a cloud that we normally find inside nebula, or inside, for example, this right here. This is the nearest uh, molecular cloud to us, the so-called TMC or Taurus molecular cloud. These really large objects are normally what stars are made of. But sometimes they don't really make stars and just kind of travel across the galaxy and some of them approach the central black hole a little bit too close. Today we believe that when one such object with the mass of about 100,000 masses of the sun approached the central region, it fell into the central black hole and ended up producing a tremendous amount of energy. This obviously increased the mass of the black hole, but most importantly, it generated all of these effects we're observing and that are still there as well. For example, these Fermi bubbles still emit quite a tremendous amount of X-ray and gamma-ray radiation that is easily visible with a typical X-ray or gamma-ray telescope. But as of today, this is the only such event we know of happening here in the Milky Way. We know these events happen everywhere, but we don't really know how to predict them or when next such event occurs. These molecular clouds are extremely difficult to see, and their motion across the galaxy is also extremely difficult to predict. We know that some of these molecular clouds are normally traveling in such a way that takes them outside of the galaxy, and then they go above the plane and eventually turn and return back to the center of the galaxy. There could be some of these clouds doing this right now, and one such cloud could actually be headed toward the Milky Way center once again. If this happens, something like this could happen again. And we don't exactly know what sort of effects this has on life on our planet. Even though Earth is sort of pretty far away from the center of the galaxy and may not really be affected by these so-called Seifer flares, 
we still would really like to know what actual effects it has on everything on the planet and if it's something we need to be worried about for the future. Which is of course why studies like this are kind of important. They anticipate events that could potentially change the evolution of life on the planet and they help us understand what happened in our galaxy and which of these events we should be worried about. But until we learn more about Fermi bubbles or Seifer flares, or until we discover something else unusual in regards to this particular event or how, most importantly, it affects our own planet, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and check out the study in the description below. Also, come back tomorrow if you'd like to learn something else, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.